Hello, 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 everybody. How is everyone doing? Testing, 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 sound, one, two, one, two. Is the microphone working? Testing, one, two, one, two. Hello, how is everyone doing? It is, let's go over Monday, April 5th, 2021. And this is my official, well, technically, I guess I've done one crochet along before, at least an intro, but then I kind of, you know, are you really a crocheter unless you don't finish some projects? <laughs> so really, really cool. Um, anyways, uh, I actually forgot to. create a screen so I will do it while I am talking to you all but anyways I'll give you guys a moment let's give a quick shout out and say hellos to some people I have sorry I need to make sure I'm not forgetting any of my members that they put in the chat because it doesn't tell me my computer program but it does tell me uh, on my phone Hey, snap, 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 snaps for our members. We got Karen. Uh, I also saw Blanca. I see you. I see you. Hey, Ola Joe. How are you? Oh, look at that. You guys see that little picture next to their names? That is a special picture that I took and I made. And if you become a member of the channel, you get a little picture, a little mini me, <laughs> anytime you're in the chat. <laughs> Okay, yes. <laughs> yes, snaps for watching the ads. Thank you so much, Ola Joe. <laughs> Chicago in the house. Okay, wait, where is she? Ola Joe, where are you? I just saw. There you go. <laughs> snaps for Ola Joe. Thank you for watching the ad. <laughs> I saw your chat message first. So I assumed you were watching the ad when you sent that. So <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the easiest and the freest way to support your channel and your favorite YouTubers is to just simply watch the ads. It's just five seconds. Sometimes it's 20 seconds. If you watch it, it's the best way you can support us. <laughs> but anyways, so what is this? Uh, because I need to move on in case someone replays this video. I don't want to talk too, too much. And we're already five minutes in. But uh, this is a going to be an interesting project that I'm going to take on, and hopefully you all join me. Uh, like I said, this is um, I've always been crocheting personally for many years, and I haven't really gone too mainstream in terms of my art, crochet art. So when I opened up the channel, that was a way for me to share with you all during my own private time and at my own speed my designs and what I'm just doing from day to day. Now what I kind of want to do, or at least one of my goals for the channel this year, is to do more interactive things with you all in the sense of things like this, the crochet along, the watch alongs when we watch uh, movies or TV shows together and we're crocheting and talking about what we're watching. Uh, and also some couple other things that hopefully you guys will join me once they are finalized. But this is a crochet along. And so for this video, consider this video kind of like your free trial in the sense that I want to reward my monthly members of any level. You don't have to go to the highest tier, um, but this is a experience that I want to provide exclusively at first. I'll put it available for public probably like a month or two after I actually do it, but I want to provide this experience for the channel members. Um, so if you are or ever have been interested, this is an extra perk that you're going to be able to get from me in which we literally create these garments together at the same time. Depending on what it is, you know, we'll work on it. And then when we meet up, we will continue on from uh, the homework that you got and everything will be written and it will be in a video. So you will never lose your notes and you'll be able to uh, go back and recreate any of my designs with these crochet alongs so hopefully you join me for that endeavor and yeah that's pretty much it so i'm going to move on this is the intro hopefully you're interested and if you are 
hit that join button next to the subscribe button. That is the easiest way to do it. The little window is going to pop up and it's going to explain all of the details for you all. So instead of like selling a pattern or whatnot, this would kind of be the best way to get my stuff at the moment. <laughs> Because this in turn is going to translate to me getting better at writing patterns and whatnot. And then, so it's a chain reaction. So hopefully you join me now when my experience level is I don't know how to write a pattern. And I'd rather do a crochet along where I can just write it out on the screen for you all. And I'll learn how to write a pattern and then it'll be a better experience for us all. Cool. Okay, so if I did this right, let's see. Bam! Haha! -ha. You guys like this? So this is actually, I designed this to look like a <laughs> computer uh, presentation. So hopefully you guys like the little uh, changes here and there. So anyways, what you will need for this um, crochet along to create. So if you look at the bottom, it says this creates an adult small. I am an adult small in the sense that I am 5'3 on a good day. My width in terms of my chest is, I believe, 29 to 32 inches with some ease. And so in total with my arms, which is about eight and a half inches with ease. So that's about in total round up, what, 40? Uh, so if your body size is the same as mine, I would consider that an adult small. Other than that, I would probably add two of the mandala stripes and two of the heartland yarn because the thick ones is actually we're just using this as kind of like detailing for the garment so you are actually probably only going to need one regardless of your size cool 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 and so i think if you like go and use some of the specials from joann's if I'm not mistaken, you can create this garment for under $20 because sometimes they have, a, I believe right now they have a buy three, get the fourth for free. So if I'm not mistaken, you can actually get all four of these right now with the deal that they have. So you would actually be paying, especially if you're going to do an adult, medium or small, you would be getting these three and then you can pick one more, I guess, of these to, uh, to get the fourth one for free. If I'm not mistaken, Karen, correct me. She's better at doing the mental math than me. I'm pretty sure most of these are around the same price. Heartland Tweed. See, I forgot to do that kind of research for you all. I will make sure I do that next time. But I'm pretty sure all of these are like five, six bucks. So, cool. Uh, that's what you will need for an adult small is one of Thick and Quick, one of Tweed Stripes, and one of the Heartland Tweed. You are interested in specific colors, the red the Thick and Quick is actually called Campfire, number 621. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. Campfire, number 620, oh, 621. And then the black is literally is Black Canyon Tweed. I think there's only two colors of this particular, particular yarn. It's gray and black. And then the Mandala Tweed Stripes, I think... Well, you can just pick your favorite color, uh, but if you want this one in particular, this one is called Horseshoe. Horseshoe. And there's two versions of this. I think this is the lighter version, because if I'm not mistaken, I think they invert the colorways. There's two different versions of all the names. So don't rely on just the name. You really have to go and see how the colors are playing out, because not all... The cakes are the same. Cool, cool, cool. So that's that. That's what we are going to need. Moving on. Let's do... Uh, did I do this right? Is it this one? Okay, cool. It's going to look similar like this, but also it's going to have hints of what I'm actually wearing as well what hold on let me get rid of that one uh the reason why i'm wearing this particular cape is be or poncho is because i wanted you to see what a poncho looks like with 
pure open stitches like this so see how it's all window pane and there's like one double crochet every now and then whereas in the photo here it's mostly closed and the reason for that is because this is a size 4 yarn the mandala tweed stripes so you kind of want to use up as much as you can uh, which is why I use a lot of half double crochets on that now what I will try and attempt to do is to show you how I do some of my surface crochet uh, with the tweed stripes that is the plan because essentially what I want to do is replicate this section here where it's open um, with the more closed section here so I want to combine it it is kind of open there but not as uh, what I did here was one row half double crochet one row window pane one row half double crochet and what I want to do is I want to switch it up to look more like this where it's all window pane so it's really really open but then it has that chunk of closed uh, half double crochets here and then we're going to do some surface crochet cool, cool, cool. Uh, so we have some other people joining us Hold on, let's do some quick. Uh, hey, Kim, how are you? Uh, Karen says 25% off at Joann's right now. Very, very cool. Thank you for checking. And okay, cool. Thank you, Ola Joe, for saying hi to everyone for me. <laughs> All right. Cool, 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 cool. All right. I think that's everyone. Just checking the comments. All right, moving on. Now, hooks, what we will be using in terms of hooks. Now, we technically do have only two size differences here, which is a size four for the Heartland Tweed and the Mandala Tweed. Um, so this is, they're both fours, which I'm looking at now. However, working with them before, I can already I already know that the Heartland Tweed is quote unquote thicker than the Mandala Tweed. So even though they are both size fours, I would consider the Mandala Tweed thinner than the Heartland Tweed. Therefore, uh, the recommended hook size for the Tweed is an I. I think I'm going to do that, but for the Tweed, so for the Heartland Tweed, I'm using the recommended hook size, which is an, oh no, they recommend a J. I'm gonna stick with, or let me see, hold on. Uh, you know what, no, I'm gonna stick with, yeah, I'm gonna follow what they're recommending. So Heartland Tweed, they're recommending a J, so we're using a J, which is a six millimeter, and then an I hook, which is a five and a half millimeter for the Mandala Tweed. So we're using the recommended hook sizes. I just wanna make sure that it's actually changing in size because if it wasn't then we would have a problem but other than that I don't mind following what it's recommending it works up fine yeah I've worked up this with an I before I've actually worked it up in an H also um, but that's just a little bit too tight and I kind of want this to stretch and breathe as you wear it cool 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 uh, oh and then this one the thick and quick is recommended hook size is an N I will be using H I J K L M N. Recommending an N. I'm gonna go down. So I'm gonna actually use an M hook because which is nine millimeters. And the reason for that is because when it comes to my chunky yarns, I don't want my chunky yarns too loose. I'd rather be very specific when I use it because um if you make it too loose, chunky yarn just looks, I don't know, makes your garment look um, unpolished in a way. And if anything, this will give, if you forget to like actually fit a garment to your body size, then not being very uh, generous with the looseness and the tension of your chunky yarn, you can actually give it a nice, how do you call it, like a ribbing to your garment. So you can actually like suck it in a little bit, like slim it down your silhouette when it comes to using the chunky yarn. So if you size down, that's what that effect gives it. Because if you keep it too loose, it'll make your garment, for my personal taste, not what we're looking for. All right, now, ba -ba -ba -bum. Let me 
change this. All right, real quick, I wanted to touch base as to what is the goal or the, what is the, um, uh, how do you call it? What is the purpose of this experiment? If you notice, they both have the word tweed in their label. However, they refer to that visual effect in different ways in the sense that with the mandala tweed stripes it's actually printed on there uh not printed how do you say this the uh it's two strands mixed together to create contrasting colorways which creates a tweed effect so it's not like a physical fleck which is this one because this actually has a little bit of rayon in it which i'm assuming is the flex of color and those are actually entwined in the yarn. So this is an actual like physical tweed effect where they actually have like pieces of yarn in there in different colors to give it that speckling. Whereas this one, because it's colored, uh, the yarn is actually colored and twisted together, it gives it a uh, printed tweed effect, meaning nothing's gonna stick out um if you really want to see the contrasting colors and where sometimes it's very obvious there are some mandala tweed cake stripes that are very obvious in terms of um contrasting colorways so like they'll put a pink with a pink with uh a gray you know something that's really really opposite of uh the color wheel but this one is a little bit more subdued so you don't actually see the contrasting color like you can see it on the camera now but when you see it on like the picture that I just showed you, like even if you take a picture of it, that's the same type of yarn as this. And you cannot even see, like you can literally see the cake on the left, how you can see the darkness of the yarn. But then when you take a picture, you don't see that. So, uh, Whereas the gray in there has the actual physical flex and you can still see the different flex of colors in the gray. So that's what this challenge is. And then what's interesting in Campfire is that see in the camera, you can see the different colors in there. The color is actually printed on there, meaning the color is, it's two strands twisted together, but in each strand, there's parts of colors printed into the yarn. So this is actually like a printed tweed this is two strands making it look like a printed tweed illusion. And then this is a physical fleck tweed. All from the same company too, which is pretty cool, right? <laughs> All from Lion Brand. So that's what this whole thing is. Uh, or at least that is what the purpose of this crochet along is to see how uh, things that are labeled as tweed, except for this one, this is not labeled as tweed, how they play along. It's always not, I mean, you know. <laughs> Uh, it's sometimes people, especially if you Google it, if you Google the word tweed, you get a certain style. And so I think it's very helpful to explain to some people that even though it says it, you actually have to see, is it a physical printed or twist illusion tweed? <laughs> Take a shot every time I say the word tweed. <laughs> All right, now to give you a little palette cleanser because I just talked a lot. <laughs> Literally, yeah, someone put down, are we in school? <laughs> I know, well, hopefully that's the whole idea with this is that we get a little education in there. It's not just sitting down and creating garments. We're actually understanding the fibers that we're using. We're understanding why we chose certain yarns. <laughs> I know, right? You guys are funny. So let me give you a little palette cleanser. I got some happy mail. If you are my friend on Instagram, you already saw that I got this. So this is from DK Grand. These are some stitch minders, as she calls them. Hold on, let me... Uh, oh wait, is it this one? Yeah, it's this one, cool, cool, cool. 
check that out isn't that nice so what she does is she actually is a graphic designer so she creates yarn versions of yarn interpretations of everyday things so if you see the sun is actually a ball of yarn <laughs> and the raindrops are little raindrops of yarn and i think she oil painted each of them so there's one of every color there's a purple one there's a green one where are the other ones there's a yellow one i saw a red one orange and blue where's the blue mr blue where are you there you go mr blue and then in this one this one's movie themed so the pretzel the popcorn the soda the movie reel everything is made out of yarn <laughs> i don't know if you can see that look at that there's a ball of yarn inside the cup of soda <laughs> The popcorn is little balls of yarn. <laughs> so I just thought this was adorable. And then this one, it came, I got the sticker of the rain cloud. I just thought that was so cool. I'm gonna add this to my laptop. And then I also got this set of three, which is dog themed. So the bone is yarn with some hooks. Got the paw print with yarn. And then you have the food that says stash and it's <laughs> balls of yarn. <laughs> So yeah, adorable. <laughs> I know, right? Every time I say tweed. All right, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Let's move on. So let me go ahead and copy this. Hold on. This one. Let me copy that. Okay. And then I can change this. So let's get started. On. I'm typing it out. All right. So what we're going to do now is get started on the foundation chain and whatnot. Cool. Adult small foundation chain. So for me, I think what we're going to do is, uh, the reason why I also wore this poncho is because I wanted to use the color break, the way uh, I broke apart the colorway. I want to use that as inspiration for the three colors that we're using. So for example, the green is going to be the black tweed, the gold is going to be the mandala tweed stripes, and the white is going to be the uh, thick and quick red campfire. So we're assigning colorways Exactly what you're seeing in this poncho, we're assigning the colorways, okay? So the red is where you see the white. The black is where you see the green. And then wherever you see gold is the mandala tweed stripe. Now you can pick where exactly you want to start on the cake. Because in particular for me, looking at this, I kind of don't want it to be too light on top just because I know that there's going to be black here. So that being said, and keeping in mind that there's going to be red and then black, I kind of want to start where it's beige and blue as opposed to that cream part that's right here in the center. So I'm actually going to pull a little bit of this out and cut it. Isn't this cool? Look. My little handy dandy scissors. Uh, what did I say this was going to be? I correct. Mm. Or you know what? Since this is actually going to be black, I actually don't want the dark colorways to be too close to the black. I would actually prefer the dark parts to be on the edge, like towards the bottom, because then I can use the red thick and quick to break apart that and it'll contrast a little bit more, I think. So you know what, I think I'm gonna change my plan. I think I am gonna start on the outside because then the black tweed is going to break apart nicely in this cream. So to create every one of this, or uh, to create, <laughs> I was reading the comments, <laughs> thumbs up everyone and I said to create every one of this. <laughs> uh, 
for my adult small, I already know for my dimensions, I like to start with a, I believe it's a 90 stitch foundation chain. So let's go ahead and do typing it in foundation collar row. Cool, cool. Uh, I guess I just changed the color of that, right? Uh, let's make it more blue, I guess. There we go. One, two, three. Hold on, yeah, wait. I think 90 was four fingering weight. Hold on, don't look at that. <laughs> it might be 45 actually, because this is a size four. Hold on, I'm updating that. And this is 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. 43, 44, 45. Okay, so this is 45. Should be able to go, see, so that's a little bit too tight. So let's add 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So that's 55. See, and that's better. Because it's easier to always uh, decrease at the end. So like it's always easier to go back and decrease on the collar than to uh, do the opposite. All right, so you're gonna add one, or don't don't add one because uh, we're actually going to, so what you do is smooth it out, make sure that none of it turned in the sense that make sure everything is in the same direction because when you close it into a circle, okay, you can pick either the top or the bottom, doesn't really matter. I like to pick the bottom because then you can predominantly see where your stitch is supposed to go. Close it up and you get a circle. Close into a circle. Cool, all right, you're gonna chain one and since you already know that it's 55 stitches, your collar, um, for this first row, if you forgot, because it ha does happen where you forget <laughs> literally what you just did, um, just add one half double crochet into everything, into each stitch, and you can recount and just double make sure that that's what your number is. Because uh, I always like to increase by 10 stitches every row, especially when I'm doing something in the round, it gives it a nice even increase along the whole body. Uh, because I've discovered that if you do 20, it's too much and it makes the garment too big. And then if you do less than 10, you never have the freedom to uh, continue adding rows without it becoming, because like by the time it gets to your elbow, you'll have enough of stitches to <laughs> cover your arms and your shoulders and your body. So, I find that 10 is a nice sweet spot magic number that keeps things nice and even and it, you're not doing too many increasing rows to get to uh, where you technically want to stop when you're making something in the round. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> so that's all I'm doing right now is adding one half double crochet into all of this. So if I did this correctly, I should have 55 in each one. And just divide it by 10. So 55 divided by 10 is like five point something, 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 right? Uh, so just round down, don't round up. So I'm just gonna add two half double crochets after every fifth. And you can do that either here in the first row or do it in the second row. It all really depends on you. It doesn't really change the size or the look of the silhouette, but there are a couple opportunities 
because essentially what I'm trying to tell you is if you forget to count or you mess up now in the first couple rows, don't sweat it because you can always fix your mistake either in the next row, as long as you're aware, just fix your math, or you can just frog it and then do it right from start to finish. Because I mean, <laughs> let me know in the comments, when have you, has, uh, have you, uh, as you're working, you realize you're messing up, but you keep going. And as you're going, you're also like doing the math in your head of how to fix the row that you're currently on or the next row. Please tell me I'm not the only one that does that. Because <laughs> some people usually are like, they just give up and they're like, no, I have to frog. I have to frog. I messed, I messed up. I messed up. Or sometimes if like, I know that I'm like, oops, I, <laughs> I added twice as many as I needed on this row, I'm just going to decrease by half <laughs> in the next one to fix what I did. And sometimes you get a nice cool effect because like that's how I discovered how to do ripple. So like if you want to learn how to do a beret, ooh, we should do a beret, right? There's a certain way you can do where it gets like the little puff sections, you know, like a, in a chef's hat, how it's like divided. <laughs> been there but sometimes have to have to admit defeat <laughs> yeah i know sometimes it's just like you realize that you messed up way too much yeah just no i know what you mean all right i'm coming up on this row and like i said so with this next row and essentially what I want you to start learning how to do is using your foundation row as a visual guide of um, the sections of your poncho. So if I were to literally tell you, visualize me sitting here from like the ceiling perspective. So like if there was a camera above me, you know how like the circle is like flat out like that. So I want you to start what I'm hopefully you learn from this is that what I tend to do is any intricate stuff that I'm going to end up doing later on in the poncho. I mark it in the first couple few rows here in the circle. And that gives me the visual reference that in this section, you're going to be doing that weird stuff that you're going to be doing. So if you're going to be doing like some cable work, because I have a cape. And I tried to find it, but it was too deep in the baskets of the finished objects where I did cable work. And instead of having stitch markers and everything to always mark it, all I did was uh, anytime I like increased in the sections here in the foundation row, that kind of visually led me to making sure that the cabling uh, actually came out straight because since it's a circle that you're wearing, things tend to slant, especially when you're increasing in a garment in the round so keep that in mind when you're increasing in a garment in the round things slant so you need to never really trust that you're going straight just going down you have to always keep a visual reference of the section of the garment that you're when you're working on it okay cool hopefully that made sense <laughs> all right uh, so we just did the first row. Now in the second one is where you're going to increase. And what did I say after the fifth, right? Because it was 55. So one, two, for those who have been asking how I increase, three, four. And so on the fifth, you're going to add two, half double crochet. And one, two, three, Four, and then on the fifth, add two, and so on. So now I know that anytime I see a double, two half double crochets in the foundation row, I know that in that general section is where I'm going to always be increasing. One, two, three, four, five. Then you just do this all the way. And then you never have to really think about it ever again. Anytime you see two half double crochets in there, you know that you're increasing. And that's how you can always keep track of uh, what 
where you increase. And the great thing about it also is that when you feel like you're doing too many singles, so like if I did eight half double crochets, in my mind, I'm already like, wait, if I'm supposed to increase on the fifth, there should have been one already. So you can kind of like, it kind of triggers you when you're working on it, not to miss one because you're constantly trying to look for where you added two in one. Does that make sense? But like, because you're constantly looking for it, you're aware of the increase. All right, and so we're just gonna go ahead and do this. So for this part one, I just wanted to start off the foundation chain and get any questions out of the way in terms of that. But we're just going to increase for about two rows, and then I'm gonna show you how that's gonna look like when you increase using the window pane stitch. And it's going to be keeping in mind what I was describing, which was anytime you see two half double crochets in one, you will increase even though you're doing window pane stitch. Because just because you're changing the stitch that you're currently working on, it doesn't necessarily change the rules. So if you know you're increasing by 10, it, if I'm doing the pineapple stitch or if I'm doing the granny stitch or if I'm doing V stitch, I know that there has to be 10 extra granny stitches. There has to be 10 extra V stitches. There has to be 10 extra window pane. There has to be 10 extra double crochets. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm trying to ramble so it's not too boring <laughs> as I'm crocheting because we all know it's boring to look at someone crochet <laughs> it's more fun to like crochet with someone or against someone. But I'm also trying to answer any questions you might have beforehand as I'm doing this so that way you don't have to write it and wait for me to reply. One, two, three, four. Ugh. I think because I changed, no, it's the recommended hook size, but it keeps slipping off the hook. I don't know why. I'm also trying not to be too tight on my tension. Maybe that's why. I'm too scared to pull on this yarn because uh, because it is two strands together. Uh, if you pull too tight, it'll split. So you have to have like a nice gentle tug on the tension or else you'll split every single time and you're just wasting time. The idea is to try and get as many stitches smoothly as possible. So you're maximizing. <laughs> I see it as a kind of like an arthritis meter. <laughs> Think of like, you know, like the character gauges in video games when you're like hurting someone. <laughs> I see that as like my time frame before it starts to actually hurt for me to crochet. So I'm like, I need to make sure every time my wrist moves this way, it's worth it. <laughs> I don't have time to be messing up on stitches because <laughs> the meter's going down before it starts to hurt. All right, so I think I'm gonna stop. So I just did just, I just increased once. I'm gonna stop there, but you can keep going depending on how thick you want the half double crochet section. But for right now, and for all intents and purposes, so the video is not too long, I'm just going to quickly show you how you can increase with a window pane stitch. And I'm gonna be doing it in double crochets. However, because I think these are double crochets, if I'm not mistaken, or half. No, I think these are half. No, these are double. So these are double, so these are pretty open. So we can actually do double then. Okay, so we just started this next row. How do I make this bigger? Cool. Okay, so we just finished the row. I'll start all the way in the beginning. Okay, we just finished. Okay, good night. You're gonna do two, one, two, chain two, because we're working on double crochets now. Do a double crochet in the first one. Chain one, double crochet, skip a stitch, and put the double crochet on the second one, okay? Chain one, skip, and go, okay? 
So when you get here now, so if you notice, we have a stitch here where there's two half double crochets from the previous row. What you're going to do is consider that two. Or in this case, you're going to, uh, I lied, you're going to just add, you're going to still chain one. So you're chaining one, okay? Chain one, you're going to add two double crochets in this increase in stitch, okay? Chain one, skip, and continue on with that pattern. Chain one, skip, chain one, and you're about to go into another one where there's two half double crochets in there. You're gonna add two double crochets in there. No chain one in between. That's just your increasing, uh, how do you call it? Your increasing row or stitch. Okay. Got another one here. The only one where you're actually chaining one is right before it and right after. You do the two double crochets. And then that's how you do it. So now when you go in the next row, you still have the visual marker of where you're increasing because you have two double crochets in there. Because trust me, I was one of those crocheters where in the beginning, I literally had probably 15 stitch markers on a garment because I wanted to make sure I didn't lose my placement of cables or where I increased or uh, where I did some weird uh, stitch that required a specific number of stitches to be done. It just gets too complicated sometimes, so don't don't make things too hard for yourself. Just as long as you give yourself a visual reference, you don't have to have things dangling off your garment to work. All right, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you real quick how to, let's go back to the directions or the directions. No, where are the directions? Here we go. Okay, uh, close into a circle. Uh, what did I say we did after that? Uh, one, oops, lowercase. One half double crochet into each stitch for first row. And then uh, increase on the fifth, or I guess, what is it technically? Chain one, after finishing that row, chain one, and in the next row, increase on the fifth stitch. This is your visual indicator. Sorry, I'm typing something out. There you go. Now you can see what I'm typing out. This is your visual indicator for when to increase moving forward. All right, does this make sense? <laughs> Students, does this make sense? Are we good? All right. Cool. Now it looks nice for you all. Yeah, so, oh, okay, so I guess I'm assuming, okay, I'll put it in there, but yes, I'm assuming you slip stitch, where would that go? Um, Uh, 
Okay, I think I put it in there, right? Join your row to complete. After finishing that row, chain one, and in the next row, increase on the fifth stitch. This is a visual indicator. We're going to increase moving forward. And then we start with the, what was it? The window pane, correct? So uh, join row to complete. Chain two and add double crochet into first stitch of new row. Okay. And then we said chain one. And add double crochet into chain one. How, do, how does this make sense? Chain one, skip a stitch, and add double crochet into, how do you say, second away from you? One, two, uh, and add double crochet into the next stitch. <laughs> into the chain one skip one double crochet next stitch <laughs> there you go Alex see see how, how complicated this is <laughs> okay cool <laughs> see see what I mean we're learning together there you go how's that that's what we did right now. I think that's it for right now, okay? So essentially, uh, keep going until, because if that's here, um, I guess keep going for five rows. Thank you, Dawn. <laughs> I know, right? But that's the biggest issue that I've had so far is that what makes sense to me when I think about it, I realize that it may not make sense to someone else. So it's even harder for me to be like, how can I make sense to someone? <laughs> All right, snaps. Snaps for Don and Karen for helping me out. All right, so I think this is it in terms of how... I think this is where I think I want to stop because we're about to hit an hour. If there's any questions... If there's any questions, you may ask me now. In the meantime, I'm going to explain how to join this crochet along. Uh, like I said, the join, this is available to all of my crochet along videos would be available to the public, which means like on my channel, I haven't decided yet if maybe a month or two months after I actually publish them to my members. So if you join my channel memberships, which on any level, doesn't have to be the highest one, uh, it starts at $2 and it's the easiest and best way to support this channel in particular. And as opposed to me like charging you for a pattern or whatnot, you're literally getting access to me live teaching you how to create a pattern. And yeah, you're only paying two bucks a month <laughs> for it. So this, uh, this video will stay up on the channel as a kind of like a free trial for everyone else. For everyone else in the members, uh, there's going to be a schedule in the community tab where you can like take a screenshot of it or just know that it's always going to be there and you can refer back to that for when the next dates of this is going to be. I'm going to try and do this uh, because the idea is that even if you don't catch me live, you will still have access to the videos exclusively, exclusively to you members in the members. Uh, when you log into my channel, you'll be able to see it. So it's like unlocked for you automatically. Cool, cool, cool. Um, if you just hit the join button next to the subscribe button, you'll be able to, it'll tell you how to, uh, how you can join. 
if I'm not mistaken. In terms of like, uh, I think all you have to do is like pick your level and stuff. And okay, uh, hit the join button. Pick a member tier, and then I believe that's all you should do. No, you're fine. Don't worry. <laughs> I get it. It's always better to ask questions, my mom always said, than to do something you're unsure of. Cool. Did I do this right? Can I shrink you? There we go. Awesome. So that's it, guys. That's pretty much it. This is kind of like a mini commercial slash preview slash <laughs> let's do this together. Um, but yeah, hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget. Oh, wait, I should... Oh, uh, how do I do this? How do I do this? Don't forget. Do I have it here? Yes, yes, I do. I have a new video, everybody. So if you can do me a huge, huge, huge favor after you're done here, go watch the newest video on my channel. <laughs> How do I draw an arrow there and I like that? Did I do that right? <laughs> oh wait, oh, how do I shrink, shrink, shrink? There we go. So yeah, go watch the newest video on my channel. It is how to use a mini skein set. It is my collaboration with Teal Torch Knits. I would highly appreciate it if you give that video a view. I would also highly appreciate it if you could share that video. If you're part of like, you know, yarn groups or whatnot, it is a nice educational video of how to maximize mini skein sets. Cause I know a lot of hand dyed yarn people are making advent calendars now. So you could do like a pay payment plan and whatnot. Um, or for people who just have mini skeins in their stash, this is the perfect way to visualize and break apart those colors and to create three garments, hat, cowl, and a poncho out of uh, your potential, potentially your mini skein set that you have in your stash, okay? Um, thank you so much, everybody. I think I'm gonna end it here. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, snaps to all the members that are joining. Thank you so much, Ola Jo. Thank you so much, uh, Karen, I saw you. Blanca, I saw you. And uh, who else did I see? I think that's all the members that I saw today. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, everybody. I will see you in the next video. There's new videos coming up this week. So uh, yeah, make sure notifications are on on the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Bye.